Here's the issue. Now that's when I discover that my father and the sitting bishop, they had fought for the bishophood of the church. Your problem is that you are a competitor to this old man. And this old man knows that once you come here, you might want to claim your position. Now I become like shocked. But my entire life I've just lived like a, that was what was agreed upon. Okay, so this agreement was a family agreement. Yeah, it was a family Does agreement. Does it make you heir to the throne? As per the history of the church as to who it comes from, I mean, who it started it and all that, mm -hmm. yes, it does. Yeah, so that has been like a chain of my life. I've been to all levels of the police. The minister got letters twice, two different years. Even today, they're not telling me that, no, we'll review and give you another chance of doing one, two, three. My father then fast forward, he started to fight with the bishop of the star now as to who should be a bishop. What taints my father is his lifestyle. He got himself with gangs, they were robbing banks, uh, he committed some murders, and then they decide that, okay, your son, that is before I am born, your son or one of your sons will take over from me. And then the council decide to vote for the current city. Yes. No, I got to know that there is someone in Vets who is busy failing me. Could, so and you could not prove it. I could not prove it because firstly they don't want to remark, and there is no a law that can say that no. I mean that's unconstitutional. I mean even I mean what do you call what, what, what do you call this uh, body where lawyers uh, write their the bar. The bar. When people are complaining, they can go there and request for a review and stuff like that. They didn't. Even His name is Dumelo Selamulela. He used to use another name. I just want you just to be <laughs> just, just to be patient. It's a long one because I wanted him to speak fully without interrupting him because this is what you always request from me. So here's the issue. He has went to Human Rights uh, Commission, the African Human Rights Commission. He has went to the subs from provinces to national to the minister. He has consulted people and you would see I also struggle to understand what is it that he's seeking for at the end. But he says he's the heir to the throne of the ZCC church. He was kidnapped when he was young. And he tells the whole story of all of these events and, and his family's uh, as usual, he, he has receipts. I mean, he sends me emails of everything that was he, he was involved in. But I just want you to watch it, make your own decisions. As as usual, Mashiani politically incorrect. We do not stop anyone's narrative. We listen and we let you decide. Thank you very much. Just continue watching and tell me what you feel. Mashiani politically incorrect. Today, I'm going to try as much as possible to sit back, listen to what Dumelo says. It's a long, complex story about his, uh, his life, his life story. It involves a whole lot of things. Uh, Dumelo, please tell them who are you, where are you from, and what's your life story as I sit back and, and try to consume. Okay. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Yeah, uh, my name is Dumelo. Uh, those who went with me to prom, pro, primary and high school, they know the same name, Robert Hart, but uh, due to circumstances, <laughs> I changed the uh, same name to Salam Lela. Not voluntarily so. Uh, that is part of the story, why okay. I was actually forced to change to this current one that I'm using. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll say my story begins or erupts in 2016 after the man that I was staying with, whom I believed was my uncle, I mean, was my father. So to interrupt, just tell us when were you born and where in particular, just so we can track your story back until 2016. Okay, uh, from and before 2016. Yes. According to my knowledge, I was born in 1989, March there. Uh, the mother coming from a place called Bulubidu, Hamapal. Okay. And then the father 
coming from uh, the ancestral village, which is the one next to Amapal, they call it uh, Lubaga, Mutawani. Okay, you but it's so it's those, these are your biological parents? Uh, until 2016. Okay, that's, that's what, what you knew. I knew and I believed and I didn't have a problem with that. Okay, no, it's fine. You, you can you can start where. Yeah. yeah. And then 2016, we no, we were no longer staying with uh, our, let me call him my uncle because I discovered he's actually my uncle. Okay. You see, we were no longer staying with him from 27, 2007 when I was doing metric up until he passed on 2016. You see. So when he dies, no problem. Someone calls me, I tell the person that I, I know already. Because the previous night I had like a dream that no, this man is dying. And the nights before they were showing me that no, he's going to die, he's going to die, he's going to die. Because he's been sick. Even though we have not been talking be between 2007, 2016, a cousin of mine arranged for a meeting early in January. Then started sharing with me stuff. In 2016, he was now staying uh, in Boyne, Moria, the star one, not the the tough one, because that's where their father's house is also at. Actually, they spend the rest of their lives living in you see. So now we start to talk, and then now tells me certain things, secretive stuff. If some people come and say, let's go and do one, two, three, so it gives me names. The person he's referring to was the, what you call, the second in hand of the Bishop of the CC, you see, who is also my uncle, both of them are my uncle, you see. And then he said, no, no, if these people come, you know, the man was staying here in uh, Haman's Kral. He said, no, if this man comes, you must not assist him with anything, because these things are more like rituals. I was speaking to the more peace, man. Yeah, yes. I'm more like rituals, so don't do these things. Already, by then, I was a member of the opposite, I mean, the, the neighboring church, Stasai, I mean, the Dove one, because uh, the separation didn't go well with uh, many people in the family. There were too many fights, and I didn't want to constantly bump into people because they stayed there in uh, the Star one, you see. No problem. Fast forward, September, he dies. Yes, that's it. He dies, and then after he, he he's dead, uh, the younger brother, who's actually the actual son of the deceased, he goes to the funeral with some of his maternal relatives. I decide not to go because of the dream that I've had. You understand? If, I don't know if you want me to tell him about the dream. Please do. Yeah. Feel free. So when he died, I see him. My uncle, my uncle has never, he, like, I think he's had financial problems. He started working from 1987, but he's never built a house. You know, his last place where he could point that that is my stand, it was just a shack. And we stayed in the shack with him from 1998 because I moved from Mapal village 1998 up until. 2006 December and then 2007 January uh, this partner of has tells us that hey we have to move to another location which is not far away play, uh, from that area the area is men's village it, it, it's men's many people in develop they know it you see so after that we were not speaking to him but I started talking to him around 2016, when the other cousin, male cousin, arranged that, oh, you must talk to this man because he's about to die. You see, then from the dream, I discovered that, oh, this man is dead. He is like he was at Mangueng Hospital. He died from there. But I see him walking back to his check. And then, over like a speed, or a You understand me? Oh, Jerry, how? Well, back or a again. Then, comes back again. Blue Tomo Lava at one point or Bumji Roman of Michigan from Muk, Bumija Misha to the Randavel. Then spiritually, you see, I see the Randavel. And then the Randavel now I start to see other uncles who have died too. And people usually, I discovered that in a family, people die between uh, what you call March and April. And the other one is going to die between August 
end September. Even my uncle, his brother, who died in 2007, when I was doing metric, died in in August. You see, so now is that to hear what happens to these people in a dream? They are telling me, but what about here, Baba? Did to one, one, two, three? Open. Ah, now it doesn't sit well with me. Then I start to be scared for my own life, because oh, next year is coming. Then who's next? Open. By then, I, really busy, I again. I was an interpreter, go again. Here, sending nurse, no problems. I'm fighting with my thoughts. Should I go? Should I not go? I decide to or not. Since I know this man is dead, people are gonna try to force me to go. But how do I attend the funeral of someone who's now literally a zombie? What are we going to bury there? That's the question I'm asking myself. And then. There are these set-up boys that I was singing in a choir with Yeko uh, Yesenteng Nas, but yeah, University of Limpopo, because I was also studying at, 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 at UNISA. So UNISA, UTT, University of Limpopo will sing together. So not because I was staying just around, I will sing with them there in the campus. No problem. I will hide go set-up boys for the whole week. No one knows where I am. My phone is off. And then in the morning of the funeral, I even passed them on the road, taking a taxi, my cousin and his uh, relatives, maternal relatives. Now I went to the church, because I'm an interpreter. It is a, it's a Saturday, there is a church there, you see, no problem. I, a few weeks passed by, the lady, uh, my cousin's mother, who I grew up knowing that she's my mother, she knew well that they were not married with my uncle. You see, she knew well that they were not married. But cleverly, after I think two, three weeks, she goes to the Department of Education because he was a teacher to claim money. Okay, didn't go well because one, they were never got, they never got married. He never paid Lobola for her. So they told her we need one, two, three, or else you can bring your children. See, so the children is me and is my cousin. And my cousin, is a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm more faster than him in many things, mentally and stuff like that. Now we start to search, I mean, to request for the ID. Then he went to point and requested for the ID. Then, uh, or no, no, no. I will accompany you to Department of Education to claim his pension fund. How so? How do you accompany, accompany us? We are not like kids. like. 2016, I was in my 20s. Then I start to recall, or in 2007, when my uncle died. Yeah, Nadula, another village, and the section, the moments. They went to the company where he was working. It's a trucking company. It was the uncle who just died. Another uncle, the one that I was warned that if he comes, you must not associate with him. Because whatever they're doing is not godly. And then the one that was, who, who was now refusing with the ID, the three there, they drive to Bronco's Parade. My aunt, you know, because in the kids, we don't have to go to the house. We don't have to People that travel all the way to Bronco's Parade, when they get there, they tell the owner of the company that. That lady, she's not mentally stable. She's not well. So she won't be able to sign for whatever money is that the company perhaps have for this former driver of yours. Fortunately, there was a driver that side who knew these people. Because my uncle sometimes, he was playing for the press band. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ZZC church. The one who dies in 2007. He will bring his friends to the church and then they will meet the family. So some of the people knew uh, his younger brother, who supposedly was my father, you see. So they started to notice, hey, something's happening. So, a phone, they called the, the wife, or, oh, I see here you have sent people, one, two, three, yeah, they appear at the office. Hey, now the wife gets surprised. I didn't send anyone there. I didn't, send, there's not even a single person that I've sent. No problem. She calls the company, the company owner becomes shocked. You guys are saying this person is crazy, but 
here she is calling me, telling me that she didn't send anyone. And then the white man told them <laughs> to go. No problem. So in short, they were trying to take his money, his pension for themselves, you see. Regardless of the fact that he had four children with the wife, they were trying to take the money for themselves. No problem. Now it's my turn now and my brother to go and claim the money of the person that I think is my, our father. Because it was even like when they were fighting, because you know these men sometimes, they don't take care of their own children. He even took, uh, I mean, the partner took him to maintenance court, Momanguemo. He was even paying some ridiculous amount uh, for maintenance. Or one. Now I put all the documents together, proof of maintenance and stuff like that, to show that he was our father. But now we are stuck with the ID. I go to Mongo police station, I request the police to accompany me there. Ah, you started at an area called Tawahon. I don't know what they were doing there. I mean, the park with them, and then we, we get to go to Boyne. When we get to go to Boyne, and then Okay, but we can go there. We walked there. When we get there with the police, because they were refusing with the ID, that's when the story broke out from one of my cousins. Just like, I wanna. But what would you do? Nobody come. He just start to shout. Or no, busy mo. He didn't even come to the funeral. Yes, I didn't go to the funeral because of that particular reason and the dreams. And I don't even regret. Even now, I don't attend funerals unless it's someone that is quite dear to me. You see, I can tell you that since 2016, I don't think I've ever attended funerals close to two, or three. If I've attended a funeral, perhaps it's one or two. Because of the stuff that I get to know. Oh, this is what people do when people die. But there are one, two, three, one, two, three, over. So now the cousin, the female cousin, start to shout at me. Her mother is there. I mean, yeah, her mother is there. The grandmother is also there. Uh, the mother of the deceased. She was still alive. Nobody says anything. They refuse with the ID. But she's the one who's refusing with it. You understand? start to insult me and tells me that you are not even uh, this man's child. Uh, you must go and look for your own father. Understand? Uh, when I created the same name is Abtad. I was going to say that Abtad. I was going to say that I'm not going to say that I'm three. I'm quiet. I'm not responding. Okay? The neighbors listening. There was one of the neighbors who came through to visit me, to greet me. He, uh, some old lady. Nicely, so she's embarrassed that I'm being insulted. And then no one says anything. Ah, we walk with the police, we walk away. They are refusing with the ID. And then, while I beg to go wrong, go wrong, we are taking their car and we're going back. I meet another uncle there, his name, uh, we don't say people's names. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I meet him there. And then I greet him, then they take me back. The police are shocked or heaven. Why would someone start to insult you when you want the ID? I mean, whether you are his father or not, you live the rest of your life knowing that this man is your father. Now, I start to think, post that, when I get home, uh, I ask this lady, who's my mother, I suppose, hey, this situation happened, one, two, three. And I know, just forget about that, just brushing it away. So, as a person, I'm starting to think, oh, maybe he, she had a child with someone else and then they decided that no we're gonna hide this as the truth to him and then you just take him as yours and then you raise him because the rest of my life they are the only two people that i grew up around even though at times i was not staying with them you see no problem i start the application process i have, now i don't have the id i went to the police and wrote an affidavit no problem that happens that happens and then um that was 2016. I, I've done the applications, and then I was now unemployed during that period, you know. And then I decided, hey, let me just go back to school. I'm not thinking anything. I'm no longer thinking about the issue, the insults, or whatever. But now, I start to recall dreams that I started having from 2007, when we moved away from that part of Mens to a section called Mahungwana, Amakai, you see. I start to see, to hear people, like, I, I know I, I'm not Tsonga, I'm not Zulu, like, 
then why are these people talking to me in Tonga? Some are saying stuff in Zulu. That time I don't understand Zulu properly. I can't tell what they're saying, you see. And then, uh, no problem. My application failed in 2016 for VEDS, and then because I couldn't pay, I didn't have money. And then 2017, I managed to pay before March, before closing days, something like that. Then I go to VEDS. Um, but my story to move to VEDS also start with problems now. That she's aware that I'm going to leave. Yeah. She starts to act fine. Then I devise a plan. I tell her that, you know what? Uh, I'm going to Rustenburg. I have to come here and finalize my applications. I'm going to Rustenburg. There is a training in one of the mines there. They selected me. I was doing the applications. No problem. You can go. Because all this time from 2015 to February, because my last job ended in 2015 January. It was at Tunis. You see, it was a contract. So they didn't renew it. All this time between 2015 15 and before I left whenever I say no I think I must relocate to Pretoria and I'm specifically choosing Pretoria I don't have the information at that time I say no I think I must relocate to Pretoria I've got friends there that can assist me with uh, accommodation for maybe three months I, I'm sure I'm not a choosy person I'll get anything and then I'll work and then maybe with time I'll take my degree and start looking for employment she comes with stories. Nah, people, you know, they're going to be complaining. So no, they're my friends, high school friends. They said I can come, it's fine. Ah, it comes with stories and stuff like that. Stories and stuff like that. And then the dreams start to become worse of these people. Now it's 2017, I think May, somewhere there. An old man appears out of the plume, just wearing a white shirt. And then, uh, uh, you know, this Muslim heads and the uh, spectacles like yours. <laughs> so, tagging complexion, uh, big stage, a bit tall, it tells me, Huck, go. Where am I going to go now? I don't know this man. It's the first time I'm seeing him. I don't know him. Go. He speaks English. Go. Just shows me the road. Go. The application is processed. Now I have to be at VEDS in July. I'm starting on second semester. But now this one, she's resisting me. She's coming up with reasons. Now I'm saying to, to what? Why would someone not want me to go and look for employment somewhere else? Because here, Polokwane, there are no jobs. Now, it's either you're working for government or some retail company. There are no companies. There are no industries. It's the reality of the town. There's nothing wrong with it. Now, I devise a plan to say, I'm going to Rustenburg. Rustenburg, I'm actually going to VES to finalize my application or something like that. I stayed a few days in Pretoria with the gents. And then I even talked to them, Jens, I want to come and stay with you. I'm going to be studying at, uh, sorry, at VETS. They don't have a problem. Now, when the night that I packed my stuff and decided that I'm leaving now, I tell her that, hey, you know what? I'm going to attend a few weeks course. It's a training course from the mine in Rustenburg. Uh, I don't know if they will extend it because I know I'm not going to come back for the whole semester no problem she said no okay she's not fine but i can tell and then i sleep a bit on the couch you know sleep a couch sleep a bit no problems when i sleep i see her like you see as in like someone is busting out it's increasing in size and get becoming angry or how we feel it's just a dream because i'm my Make sure 5 a.m. I'm out, I'm gone. I left. No problem. When I get to Jobek, I, I mean, I first go to Pretoria, and then the following day I have to attend in uh, what you call vets. And no problem. And then, fortunately, I even met a friend who was busy with construction work as an engineer, uh, working for some engineering company. They were building a road. Uh, part of M1, they were uh, renovating that bridge, or I don't know what has happened to it, next to Parktown, just the bridge below uh, Parktown. So uh, he says to me, no, no problem, you can come and stay with me, because they give them company houses. So I went there and stayed with him for two weeks, I'm attending, no problems, fine. And then the dreams start to get worse. Now I start to see a woman, a light-skinned woman, a bit tall, 
is coming to me with a tall man also, and then now that one start to say, hey, we are your parents, one, two, three, one. What's happening here? And both of these people are not my parents. Now, back to what was happening when I was at the church, the prophets were always asking me, what's in Pretoria? What's in Pretoria? Why don't you go and get a job there? You see, now they even told me about my sister before I even knew that I had a sister because according to me, I was the first born. We were just two all along before she had other two kids, two boys. Now the prophet, one of the first one told me, no, you have this tall sister, she's light skin complexion. At home, you're five. Aye, man, at home, we're five. We were two all along before she had the other two boys. We are not five, we are four. And there is no woman there. I'm thinking she's talking about my other cousin, but my other cousin that I'm quite used to, I was like, uh, she was too friendly to me, you know. And then, ah, uh, that one, she's not tall, she's short. But no, your sister is, is tall. Oh, one. Oh, but hey, who knows more? I'm in chin chin. Just come back, Allah. One day, I'll get the line. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Ah, was something like that. Oh, one. Hi, prophet doesn't. Then, Gabutisha. Not much questions. I'm ignorant at that time. I don't take the prophet serious. Because now I didn't grow up. I grew up within the church system, but I was not a church member. I was not going to church. I was just living my bookish lifestyle. Going to school, wanting to study for many, many degrees and stuff like that, you see. I'm not well informed or not. How do prophets give messages? Because they have to be safe. They can't just tell you everything. And the other one... It, when I recall back in 2016, he also said to me, your stuff is with your grandmother, you see. But when you are ready, uh, you can go to Pretoria and then things will roll out for you. You'll get a job there. Because here, yeah, I don't see any job. There, I, I'm not even asking about that. I went to consult, but I was not asking about that. But he touches the subject. But still, I was ignorant to all those prophecies, you see. Because to me, it's like, ah, this guy is garbage. It's so only when I got here, then when I started seeing, oh, my parents are these people, and then I learned, or, oh, both of them already are dead. And my father died first, and then my mother died later, and both of them died mysteriously. My father, my mother was gunned down in a home in Santen, you see? And then my mother, my, my, I mean, uh, my mother was the one who's always gunned down. My father died first from poisoning. They had a meeting. The meeting was also about me. But at that time, I don't know. I discovered this later. I had no problem. I started to worry too much. What is happening? And then I, 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 I gather courage. I called the lady that I knew was my mother. She said, look, I was at church. They told me that there was an issue between, of babies and then my parents are other people's parents. Can you please, uh, 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 other people that I've never stayed with, can you please explain this to me? She says, I know, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know whoever, you can come and then we go to see a prophet at whatever church that you want. And I start to realize, oh, no, this thing is serious. You see, I have more dreams now, the dreams are clear. Now I can see my mother, oh, she was light skinned, someone like this. No, she sometimes even come to, like, you know, I, went, I wouldn't say she's coming as a ghost, but she's trying to explain to me what happened. I went, sitting next to, to me on the bed, uh, I always wanted to be with you every day, but this is what happened, what happened, one, two, three, so, 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 and so forth. So what happened was that because my family knew that, they received a prophecy before I was even born, many years ago, that on this particular period, there's going to be a person who's born for one, two, three purposes, will be born with one, two, three things. You understand? So what happened is that when I was born at a different hospital from where I was dropped, where I was exchanged, the family had already um, had issues. My father and the bishop of this particular church they've had clashes as to who should be the bishop because my father is connected to that place 
to he, uh, through his grandfather. By the records that I have now, which I will use later in court, the entire farm was bought by this old man, you see. And then what happened was that he was killed. And then other people took over. And not only him, because when he was killed, my grandmother, my original grandmother, my biological grandmother, my father's, grand, my father's mother, took one of his brothers and said, come and become the leader of the church. The church was already there, but it was a small church, you see. No problem. My father then fast forward, they start to fight with the bishop of the star now, as to who should be a bishop. What taints my father is his lifestyle. He got himself with gangs, they were robbing banks, uh, he committed some murders, and then they decide that, okay, your son, that is before I am born, your son or one of your sons will take over from me. And then the council decide to vote for the current sitting bishop. No problem. I have never lived my entire life thinking that, okay, I'm this kind of a person, one, two, three. It's only in 27 that I discovered that. Ne? Okay, no problem. I realized that Jane, I mean, uh, the lady who uh, supposedly was my mother, she doesn't want to tell me the truth. Then I decided to write an email in 2019. Because I, 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 I asked her in 2018, she didn't tell me anything. Then 2019, I wrote an email to the commissioner of uh, SAPS, but in Gauteng, Elias Mawel. I asked him, I've got this situation. What is it that I must do? Because this person is refusing. But whatever information that I've received, either in dreams or at the church, is saying one, two, three about me. But I, didn't, I, I don't tell him that. And also the insults that I got from my... I actually used uh, my cousin's information as a way of saying, this is what aspired. Can you please assist me with one, two, three? It tells me, go to the nearest police station. I'm staying in Bram. I go to Hillbro. Hillbro, when I get there, they refuse to open a case for me. They say, no, go to family court. It's 2019. Family court. I spent the whole of 2019 going to family court a few times. The lady at family court tells me, no, this is a criminal matter. If you were abducted and this lady is refusing to tell you the truth, this is a criminal issue. 2020, I got the courage again. I start talking to Elias Mawel again. I'm, I've had the situation, they've turned me back. Can you please assist and intervene? Uh, eventually, someone decides that, you know what, they will open a case for me. They uh, said it's an inqu inquiry docket. No problem. They opened it there in 2020, uh, June. The docket set there in Hillbrook from 2020, June, until I started complaining that no, these people they don't want to send the docket to Limpopo because the suspect is where in Limpopo. Because now they have to arrange for investigation, uh, investigator and also uh, DNA between me and her. You see. Three months, I'm complaining that I'm complaining to the national, national, they take matter back to the provincial of Gauteng, and then eventually I was assisted by, uh, I think, yeah, Captain Nell is the one who assisted me, they finally uh, took, send the docket, and they don't have to take it personally, just to scan it and send it there, which cannot take three months. At that time, I'm not thinking that there are people involved, I'm only thinking that, oh, okay, maybe it's just laziness from the police. When it gets to Limpopo, the first person that took the case was uh, Captain, I think Captain Makuwele, yeah. So Captain Makuwele says, mm, I went to, they took the case to Guyane because in my statement I wrote that the lady told me that I was born in, in Kensano Hospital. So they took the case to Guyane. Then Makuwele says, I, now I don't know how to use a computer. Can you please call me tomorrow? I'll tell you the update. No problem. The following day he tells me, no, I can't continue the case. I say, why? He said, no, there are no records at the hospital. So as a result, that's a dead end case. I said, but if there are no records at the hospital of 1989, that shows you that there are discrepancies. That should give you a reason to investigate. Then 
uh, the Prince Commissioner was still uh, neglected to have. I, uh, I sent him an email, a complaint. Someone calls me from Mopana region. Now they changed the investigator. They put a lady called uh, Colonel Mzimba. Colonel Mzimba arranges for, for us to meet in Pretoria. No problem to hear me out and whatever that I'm complaining about so that she can start afresh with me on the investigations because obviously there, there are no better records according to my statement. I mean, according to Makubele's findings, who was saying this is a dead end case. No problem. Okay. She comes, when she comes, we agree that we're going to meet at a police station. But now I think she had a children. And then she said, can you please come to the mall? Because she even showed me one of her daughters. I said, hey, that one is my daughter, one, two, three. We sit just somewhere next to a restaurant. Uh, she brings me quickly or, or who she is and stuff like that. But now she's also saying, but you seem like you're successful. Uh, because by that time I was still running a career franchise. She said, you seem like you're successful. You're studying at first. Why would you want to start, touch on old issues and stuff like that? Just move on with your life. And then I ask you a simple question. You are a police officer, a colonel for that matter. I'm reporting a crime, and now there are discrepancies because there are no better records. Now I'm starting to believe my story more. Why would you say that I'm, I look successful? Do you have like a barometer for successful people? And even if I was successful, if I was kidnapped and abducted, according to my statement, why would you not investigate because I'm reporting a crime? Uh, no problem. She agrees that she will investigate and stuff like that. And then we set a date, dates that around this particular period, but I will inform you of the specific date. And then we agree that me and this lady, we are going to do DNA test. You know? Okay, no problem. The agreement was during COVID. The agreement was that either me, if, if either I am going to travel to Limpop and meet them, so that we can both identify one another. Here you are, Mashian, here I am. And then they, I can see that um, they're taking your swaps and you can also see that they're taking my uh, saliva swaps. But when they, uh, okay, first she tells me that, no, what, we will come there because it's easier for us as police to, to travel. You might have restrictions. I think, I think there were still restrictions. Uh, no problem. My thinking is that as our agreement that she's gonna come with her this side and meet at um, what you call uh, the technical, I think it's, it's their technical center there in Pretoria. I don't have a problem. I take a hot train. I was still staying in, uh, now I had moved from Bramfontein, but I'm still in the CBD uh, just around Marshall Town. Uh, actually on Absa Towers, you see. Okay, no problem. I go to that uh, it's on a location where the police uh, is like it's a forensic department or whatever the case. When I get there, she's with her son. She's not with the lady. Then I ask her, okay, where is the, the suspect? Because you said you're going to bring her. I shouldn't come to Limpop. She said, no, we have already taken her swaps. Because one, two, three, traveling issues, restrictions. And then I said, okay, if you're going to take my swaps without her here, then let's make an agreement that I will pay on for myself and get a, a what you call it, a private pathologist to test her because now you are creating a, a, a problem for me that she's not here and that now she show she shows me like a, a, a document that no indeed she signed I know a signature I can see it's a signature at that time I don't check the ID number there. Everything to me is above board because I'm not suspecting too much from the police. I'm excited that finally I'm going to prove this point. I take my swap and stuff like that. Then I start complaining because now it takes longer. Okay, my first complaint was that we agreed that in a week or two we are going to do the DNA test at the pathology because you didn't bring it so that we can both be there. Then the police start to refuse. They said no. We don't do that as the police. We do. We have got our own laboratories. I said, but the, the law still allows me. The only thing that you guys have to do is to come and be present because I want you to take the report also and use it as a form of evidence because I don't trust your processes because you can't say 
you have left her, whereas both of I'm, I'm not even sure if you have used her uh, for for the saliva swaps or if you have used someone else and you have let her sign the document and stuff like that. No problem. Someone from third month now, three months after they took our swaps, now I start complaining seriously. Now I start to talk to General Manala. He's the head of detectives by then. Now he's the deputy commissioner. I mean, deputy provincial commissioner of uh, Limpopo Subs. This man, the first question that he asked me, what do you do for a living? I know that question. He wants to gauge my mental capacity. If I really understand the law, I'm a lawyer, I work in government or something like that. That's usually what traffic officers do when they stop you. Uh, maybe... Uh, where, where, I mean, when they stop you with the intention of getting bribe for you, they just want to know who you are first. Ah, uh, then I said, nah, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't tell him much about my studies and stuff like that. No problem. This man tells me, no, we can't allow one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three and then I keep on complaining uh, to national subs. I write emails. So the police, this is how they operate. When you write emails, I can I will forward you all the emails. I've compiled them. That level, they don't respond. They don't respond because they know that if they respond, you, there will be a trace of evidence that this is what we have said. Even if you call them, most of them, the moment they know it's you calling, they no longer take your calls. You see, ah, no problem. The DNA took seven months. The whole seven months to come back and then on the other hand they're starting they are, they are refusing for me to take uh, what you call private i mean to use private pathologist on the document before the results came i started to realize that okay the the id number here is wrong it's a discrepancy the location where they have to write where was this samples collected the location says two opposing things polokwane mall of africa then I also take that information. I said, but look, the ID number here is not totally correct. There's no location called Poloko and Mall of Africa. And if there is such, maybe you were at Mall of the North, there's a mistake. What are the police doing with a suspect at Mall of the North? Because either you call her to the nearest police station or you go to a home for, blood sw for saliva swabs. Now, I'm not aware that my political aunt is involved, you see. I realized later that what happened, they realized that hey, this guy is going to know the truth. My biological aunt goes to Polokwan, head office, ne, yes, subs, to soil my case with man. You understand? To soil my case with man to say, no, hey, this guy must never know the truth. Because if he gets to know the truth, we're going to be in serious problems. In the meantime, while I'm still waiting for my result, I discover that the child whom I was swapped with was a biological son of this particular lady that raised me. But the son was also was not my uncle's son. You understand? No problem. But what has happened is that the child is dead. And he died, I think, before he was even year one year old. And on the child, I also discovered that there were two dockets of how he died. And then someone tells me the truth. You know what? I meet someone in Soviet, because my father was staying there in Soviet. He tells me the truth, but indiscreet, because people are afraid to talk to me. They're telling me straight that, hey, my man, you are a liability. We can get killed because of you. Understand? This is what happened. Your father discovered that you are family because they had switched you. They told your father to go and do DNA tests because this kid doesn't look like him. And knowing that your father is a short-tempered person, someone who's always ready to kill someone, he took some weapon and chopped the baby. But because the entire family was involved in kidnapping me and this little boy, they have to cover for themselves. They paid the police to create a false docket that says no the child I mean the boy was even stitched before burial that's how bad he was you see 
was teached. He was very, my father was very brutal. I see. So, no problem. I get to know that. Now I'm sure that there is someone who can tell me the truth. Other people tell me, go to this so and so and so. So this old man, he's a priest there at the CC. I know this man, and I know the wife. The wife is my my mother, my political mother's cousin, and my uncle's cousin. And then I further discover that my mother is the firstborn of my what do you call my maternal grandfather, but from a different wife, my colored grandmother, who was at the time staying here, but now she she died. You see. No problem. I start to discover all this information. Now people are coming to me with information, but they are scared to talk to me. Some, sometimes I have to travel as far as Tula Mahaji and Tufukan, where my father came from with her mother, stuff like that. And then now I'm confident. I'm ready for the results. I'm ready for the results. People are telling me, your father found you when you were three years old. This is not the first time that there is a case about you. He found you after that particular child was buried. You were three old, three years old when you found you. But they also made sure that you go back to those people, because here's the issue. Now that's when I discovered that my father and the sitting bishop they had fought for the bishophood of the church. Your problem is that you are a competitor to this old man, and this old man knows that once you come here you might want to claim your position. Now I've become like shocked. I, but my entire life I've just lived like a, as a normal person. And I no way in my plans I wanted to be I mean I was baptized quite late in my life for people who grew up in churches. You see? So I didn't have a plan for that. If we which is still the case now to be part of a church I mean at the top. So no problem. I'm not aware that there are too many people involved. I'm only thinking, okay, it's him, this church leader, who's also my uncle, and other people. Now I start to realize, okay, your issue doesn't start with you. It doesn't start with you. It's your family history, which is hidden. 